A war has been brewing in Riverdale between Percival Pickens and Archie Andrews. A conflict between good and evil, or in this incarnation, between those who work and those who exploit workers. Before we begin construction of my railroad, a few minor details. Starting today, my company will provide you with all the tools and equipment you require. This rental fee will be deducted from your pay. Our pay, which is actually less than what we discussed, Mr. Mayor. Well, I'm simply responding to fluctuations in the marketplace, Mr. Fogarty. Get to work. Percival has started construction, which is bad news for us, especially if it's not an ordinary train that he's building. Cheryl, you called it... A ghost train, which would grant him dominion over the souls of the living and the dead. Which, of course, one can't just run around saying to people. Most of Percival's crew used to work for you, Archie. Can't you convince them to quit? No way. No, a lot of these guys haven't worked in months. They'll take whatever they can get, even if they're being exploited or abused. Which gives Percival the upper hand. For the moment. But now that he's got a crew, he's breaking all the promises that he made to get them to sign up. He's also 100% anti-union. Of course he is. Unions literally unite people, and united people are more difficult to control. And Percival, as we know, is all about control. And Tweed. He's trying to break the workers' spirits, their resolve. A lot of these guys have spent most of their lives working union jobs. I mean, if I can do some good old-fashioned agitating, remind them that Percival's values are the exact opposite of their own, that he doesn't care about them, we might be able to get them to vote to unionize. So that instead of quitting, the workers would strike work on the railway would stop. And once again, we're in a battle for the town's soul. What exactly can I do? Sing Bruce Springsteen covers? Mm. No, thank you. Do a Lipa or bust. Uh, no, Cheryl. But the Blossoms and the Pickens have a long history of working together. For which I am deeply ashamed. Are there any family records or documents that you could raid for damning evidence we could use against Percival? As a matter of fact, a friend and I are currently in the process of cataloging the Blossom archives. I'll let you know if I find any dish or dirt. Now, can I please go? Energy, if you really want to rally support against Percival, one of my waitresses heard that Percival is apparently making his crew pay for their own coffee. So, why don't you and I head down there in one of my pops trucks and, you know, innocently hand out some free cups of Joe? Maybe suggest they start hanging out here, the headquarters of the Resistance. So when did your poison powers first start to manifest? A few weeks ago. Mm, did anything traumatic happen to you right beforehand? My father, his death was definitely traumatizing. Wait, are you Veronica Lodge? As in Lodge Rum? I am. Well, I knew your father. Well, of your father. How did you know Hiram? I used to be an ATF agent. I was part of the team tracking his rum and jingle jangle operations before I got reassigned to busting up illegal absinthe rings. Wait, I thought absinthe was legal. A watered-down regulated version is. But there is an underground market that caters to purists. Those that don't mind that real absinthe is poisonous. Wormwood, one of its main ingredients, provides its signature flavor and green color. But it's extremely toxic. Which actually brings me back to you, Veronica. According to your blood work, you're one of the healthiest people I've ever met. While your body may be producing poison, it's filtering out the toxins at an even faster rate. Your entire body is basically one giant biodialysis machine. Mom, what is it? I'm at work. Where is he? He's upstairs in your room. <laughs> Sweet digs.